Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to the Tim and Jim Show. I'm Tim Sohn, hanging out here in Pennsylvania with some drawings of my kiddos with Sohn Social Media Solutions. It says, did you guys see in StreamYard, you can now add this. It's called a headline feature. You can add below your name. You can put this little white box. So you can put your name or your social media handle or whatever. But hello, Jim Fuse. Hello, Tim Sohn. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, my friend? Good. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I kind of, I think I'm trying to figure out, you know, is, do I like it? Do I, I'm not, I'm not sure what to think yet. It's, it's definitely yeah. a, a different change. Um, of course, it's interesting because uh, Phil Palin uh, is doing a workshop about how to create a lot of these assets for your live stream. And so, uh, and Chris Stone does a great job as well. He created a lot of the yes. assets that we have for this show. So even if you have StreamYard, right, there are ways to create custom graphics, create your own custom lower thirds as well. Um, the, yes. the challenge being, if we wanted to put these lower thirds in our boxes right now, we would actually have to create what's called an overlay and make sure right. that it fits exactly where, where we are. But it's definitely doable, can be done with, uh, yes. Adobe Express is great. Canva is great. So, uh, and, and there's a, uh, yeah. So, I mean, and I think StreamYard is going to continue to do more with the graphics. Cause you know, I think sometimes people would like to have their own fonts, things of that nature. So, so yeah. Sure, definitely. for sure. And we should mention Jim that it's international women's day today also. Yes, it is. It is. And, uh, I, I am the product of an international woman uh ah. people don't always know that my mom is from lima peru um so i did make a post on linkedin uh, and twitter about about a, a picture of my mom with my uh as we say in spanish my my abuela and my tias uh they were there in the picture as well unfortunately you know two two of uh, you know my grandmother and my aunt are no longer with us but my mother and other aunts yeah. still are alive and kicking so yeah yeah it is it is international women's day uh you know i i and probably like you tim being the father of daughters uh yes. even more so uh, celebrate them and and i'm glad that uh, they're getting opportunities that our parents didn't or mothers didn't necessarily get and glad to see that women are getting the ability to to do more uh still not enough in my opinion still not enough there needs to yes, be more i agree uh, you know but but it but it is it is changing you know so we can only it hope it will yeah i definitely want to shout out my wife joy and my girls megan and caitlin and my mom and my sister eileen and there's so many other women i could mention but yes um, Happy International Women's Day. Billions, probably. Billions of women. Yeah, this could be a really long show, Jim. How long can we go? <laughs> but we right. were going to talk about something else today. I, I mean, women yes. are important, for sure. Yes. But the topic of this show was, was something slightly different. That's right. How books can grow your brand and community. And so um, I guess you could say, Tim, we can kind of start out with the, the small step, if you want to say, is yeah. that. Tim and I are both in this, not only this is volume three, but I think also volumes yeah. one and two of a hundred live streaming and digital media predictions. Uh, and my good friend, Chris Stone and I were actually uh, asked to write the forward for this book. So it's kind of cool. I don't know if you can see our names there at the bottom in small print forward by Chris Stone and Jim Fuse. Yeah. Um, so that was that was pretty cool, you know. So uh, that's very cool. You know, not not the author, but for I'm a forward writer, and I've had a chance to do that with a couple a couple other people. And then tell us about your book. Tim actually has a book. Tim's gone that next level, right? And as part of a yeah. a book uh, book collaboration. So t show us, Tim. Tell us about it. Do you have the yeah. book in front of you? So I don't have the book in front of me. I can share. I can share the link so you can share the screen. Let me do All that right. Quick. Um, yes, here we go. And but the name of my book is Perspectives on Cancer. Cancer patients, survivors, and supporters share their stories. And I'm trying to find the, here we go. 
There's my book. There we go. All right. Yes. So I think when you're thinking about writing a book, it's it's important to have a goal in mind. So so my book, and I'm curious, all of you out there who are watching live or on the replay, have you written a book or and if you have, definitely drop a link in the comments. And also, are you considering writing a book? We would love to know for sure. Um, but my book is really an extension of the weekly live stream show that I co-host with Erica Campbell, mm -hmm. um, showing up perspectives on cancer. And people absorb information in different ways, right, Jim? Whether it's video or text or audio, so many different ways to to get information out there. It's really the goal of of my book, and there's also ten other uh, guests who have been on Showing Up Perspectives on Cancer who have written their stories in this book as well. And really, the goal of of this book is very similar to the show. It's to let other cancer patients, survivors, and supporters know they're they're not alone. Um, and to encourage others to share their stories, but also it's a great way to get the word out about the show and and one of the and also there's an in-person event coming up in September again. Um, so it's really an extension of the brand showing up perspectives on cancer, just another way for for people to share their stories and and encourage others to do so. So that's really a little bit about a little bit about my book. Just a little bit. Yeah. So, so Tim, th the book's been out for how long now? A couple weeks, three weeks? The book's been on pre-order for a few weeks now. Okay. The Kindle version. Right. There will be a paperback version as well. Right. And, and so have you, what's the impact you've seen so far by just, by just releasing it from a, from a brand and I guess community perspective, have you seen any Anything? Uh, well, I mean, maybe a com combination. Have you seen some positives? Maybe what? What have maybe some of the challenges? Uh, you know, like a, as an example, I guess marketing the book. Right now that you you yeah. got it done, right? You did it. What uh, right. What are some of those challenges that? And and I guess the, the like I said, and some of the great things that you've seen maybe happen out of it. Yeah. So in terms of, I'll start with the positives, and then I'll dive into the negatives. But or challenges. I like challenges better. Right. Uh, but some of the positives have been that people have been connecting with me on LinkedIn, that more people from like in the professional world of cancer from different other nonprofits or other medical professionals, other cancer patients and survivors as well. But um, one thing that I've been doing as well is almost every day for the last few weeks, I've been putting a clip out from the show and I've been using the tool lately to, to repurpose mm -hmm. that content. And that's been driving conversation more. It's more people have been participating in conversations on LinkedIn who are not first connections or second connections. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's, it's getting the word out more about about the show but also but also about the book because in the in the comments or in the the text description i also put a link to the book sometimes as well so i think it just it by writing a book it it helps increase one of the things it does is it helps increase your your credibility mm -hmm. in whatever area you're in do you agree jim oh definitely definitely i mean i think um you know even with you know, helping Ross out with, uh, you know, the book with a hundred different, uh, you know, predictions, yeah. you know, got asked to, to create a video. In fact, uh, I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm going to share the video that I made. Yeah, for, let's for, do it. So this is an idea maybe for some of you other, other book people. So I'm going to turn this banner off for a second because it's going to take over our whole screen. For those who do not have the time or the ability to create scenes and the run of shows and scripts to get the message across. Oh, it's, it, I need to start it over. <laughs> it was a very succinct message. Right. It was, it was very, so here you go. During 2023, video will continue to increase as a way for personal brands and businesses to connect with their audience. Whether a live stream or recorded, 
scene-based software will become the most commonly used program. The ability to easily switch views seamlessly will raise the level of production and improve the quality of the content. Companies like Wave.Video, Ecamm, and EVMux have taken the lead in this space and it will continue to be a highly competitive space with the demand for live stream producers that can manage the programs for those who do not have the time or the ability to create scenes and the run of shows and scripts to get the message across. So I used, I used Big View to create that. And so what was really cool is because I was asked to read my chapter, right? Oh. So it's a little different than, um, yeah. you know, doing something ad lib. So I was able to put the exact word for word script into Big View. And so I'm able to look at the camera and see the words at the same time. It's, it's a teleprompter app. So I shared that in the, in the chat. And so it also did the captions right and so it's uh yeah really really easy to use and so you know so that could be an idea for marketing your book is maybe you do some reading clips out of it some highlights no different than like what you said you do with lately um yeah and we use lately as well with the uh, with deal casters and so i think it's a great uh great thing to do so um but yeah so you know that was that was a way for for Ross, they had a show yesterday where they were talking more about the book and they shared, there were a few of us that provided them the video clips of our predictions. And now you can go out there and, and promote it more. You know, it, it's kind of like, it's like a teaser, right? Teaser. right. Ooh, I want to find out more. So I thought yeah. that was, that was pretty cool to, to be able to do as well. Um, yeah. So yeah. I think marketing, marketing the book, it probably becomes your biggest challenge, right? Because if you don't have a big list of people, um, you know, and, and probably your list ha hasn't necessarily been focused on your cancer journey. And so, no, my list is really focused on social media, like people who are interested in social media and live streaming for their business. Right. Um, not that I haven't included anything about, you know, the cancer show or, or the book or anything in my mm -hmm in my newsletter, but the focus hasn't been from the beginning cancer related. So that's really something that I want to do going forward is create an email list specifically, you know, related to the show uh, to help get the word out. Right. Have you, have you, um, you know, Doc Rock was recently talking about that too, the importance of a list, but also yeah. um, I know we had talked about, and I don't know if you guys have done it yet. Have you created a, company page yet for the perspectives and cancer show on LinkedIn. I did actually do that the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure to share the link for that, uh, Tim, if you want here and you can, if you want to do it at first, share it in the private chat and I'll post it. Right, um, and then you can post it over on LinkedIn because one of the things folks, if you may not be aware of this is LinkedIn company pages are really growing, not only in popularity, but in the capabilities, it'll let you do. So you can get people to to follow your page. They don't have to be connected to you. I mean, it's easier if they're connected to you from the perspective of you can invite them. You get so many like invites per month. But once you get it to, I want to say it's about 150 followers. If you've got creator mode turned on, which I highly recommend as well, um, you yes. can create a newsletter. And yes. so Tim could create a newsletter for his show. We, we actually have enough now for the Tim and Jim show. We probably should do that right here. We are telling people about this, but that's why we're actually live on the Tim and Jim show company page because we got enough sub followers, right? It's followers on LinkedIn to get us to that ability to do that. We also can do, and I, I think I might've mentioned this to you the other day, Tim, we can now do a LinkedIn audio events as well. Yeah. So, um, so who knows, creator mode. maybe, yeah. maybe we'll start to do kind of a, I don't know, like, it's kind of like what Madeline Scalar does after the Twitter chat is she does an audio uh, space later in the day. And so, we, you know, maybe, maybe Tim, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try that. We'll have like a LinkedIn audio where maybe we'll have a conversation about the topic that we talked about earlier that day. You know, it'd be great if we can get our, if we have a guest that they could join us as well. 
Um, right. Or we'll just talk about them behind their backs. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yeah. that's, that's awesome what you were saying, Jim, about LinkedIn pages, because I was thinking about this perspective the other day in terms of, especially if you have a, if you have your own business, but you have different things going on. So say you have your business, you have the Tim and Jim show, you have, you know, maybe you have some other things you're involved in that are really different brands, right? Like Jim, right. you and Chris of Dealcasters Live. So it really gives you the opportunity to highlight your, your project, your brand, as a brand, as opposed to an individual. And I think that's especially important. I think it's always important, but especially if you have multiple things going on, because people yes. could get confused. I'm sure my people are totally confused. <laughs> well, well, it, it, it's, it goes back to, it's about branding, right? It's like, yes. it's another place for people to find your, to find your show. To, I mean, because, because yeah. here's the thing we run into, you know, and that's why we, you know, we've started a couple other, you know, Tim and Jim, you know, we have a Tim and Jim YouTube channel. We have a Tim and Jim yeah. Facebook page because when you have a personal, whatever you want to call it, brand profile to your point and get confusing, right? With like, especially yeah. on LinkedIn, everything we do on LinkedIn is in our personal brand feed. So if I'm commenting on somebody else's post, I mean, all that becomes a part of your activity. Now, granted, they have done a nice new feature that kind of sorts out activity. Um, so people can mm -hmm. see your videos, people can see your photos right. and, and it'll allow you to decide what you want them, I guess, kind of to see first if they're looking at your activity. Um, but on the flip side, you know, it's like if you were talking about the, the perspectives on cancer show the book, it would be nice if all that content, right, is on perspectives yeah. on cancer because then it's like I gotta go. Like I, I think I saw it somewhere on Tim's feed. Exactly. And yeah. I'm looking for it. I mean, and that's I think been kind of the frustration at times with like you know, the tube of faces is that um, yeah. you can't find stuff, right? You'll say I think I saw it somewhere. Where did it go? Um, you know. So yeah. being able to kind of sort that stuff out, I think, is is definitely important so uh but yeah so i think that's uh that's great that you got you know because the other thing too is right um all of our shows now are on the company page right because we've had an right. event it was on the company page so you can go back and find past episodes of our show right there on our page and uh might even show it as in the events tab as past events um oh it probably does now that they separate out, separate out the videos, events, uh, yes. on the now individual. Now I'm curious. Yes. But you know what they say, what curiosity did to the cat? Um, yes, I know. It doesn't bode well. Doesn't bode well <laughs> to the cat. That's right. Um, yes. If I wanna, I'm just doing a quick uh, quick look at it while we, while we talk here. Yeah, we, we have 252 followers and... Cool. Yeah, it shows upcoming. Yeah, uh, the upcoming event was the show today, and then if I click to the events tab, it shows. Yeah, it shows all the past, the past shows that we had as past events. So if we were, if I were awesome. to go to it, um, yeah, the video is right there. So that's kind of a nice, nice thing to have. You know, is the fact that our past shows are kind of now sorted in the events thing. You know, we could always go back and and do, you know, do a newsletter recap right. of what happened on the show, maybe what's, you know, happened is coming up next week. So that's, that's a, um, another way to, to do those things. So that's, uh, I think that's one of the things that people are, are missing out on LinkedIn. And, oh, by the way, yes. once you have a company page, and I don't know that this works easily on mobile, it definitely works on desktop, you can actually create uh, or you can comment as your company page. Yes. And so true. that can be a great way to kind of build visibility. I mean, if Tim wants to, is having a conversation with people, you know, maybe it's a company that works with, you know, folks with cancer, or whatever. I think it kind of makes sense sometimes is, is like, don't 
comment as Tim Sohn, but comment as perspectives yeah. on cancer because it kind of like, oh, what's this perspectives on cancer guy? And boom, exactly. click it. Now that takes him to the page. It, great to see you, Catherine Lang, and our, our unicorn friend. I hope you are doing well. And uh, yes. <laughs> She says late, but at least I get to see. Okay, so we got to smile, Tim. We got to make sure. <laughs> so yeah, we're smiling now. Thank you for the reminder. Were you saying we weren't smiling? Great to have you, Catherine. Also, uh, Mary Eckerly is here. She's the LinkedIn user that said, hey, oh, earlier. The, the, the invisible one. I, that's yes. so weird that it does that. Sometimes. And she shows up for the Showing Up Perspectives on Cancer show. So thanks for showing up here. Yes. Mary. We appreciate and it. Catherine, if you want to write a book, is definitely someone to talk to. We've had her Ooh. on a previous episode talking about uh, some of what goes into to writing a book. So Catherine, Tim did it. He wrote a book. I mean, I don't know. He should have called you, but we'll let it go this time, Tim. Next book. Wow. Tonight, just, just put me he, right under that bus. I Jim. threw you under that proverbial <laughs> bus. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I do plan, I'm saying this out loud, I do plan to make this a series of books to highlight more guests as, ah. I mean, there's already many other guests that could be featured. Okay, in other, that, in that's, other volumes. that's a good idea. That's not a bad idea at all. Yeah, so that's, a, that's, that's a interesting. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, so I mean, I think you said some of the positive, what, what have been some of the negatives, I guess? You wanted to say you. I wouldn't negative. necessarily call them negative. Challenges. It's just, challenges. Yes, challenges. I mean, I've been learning about the whole process of how to self-publish a book um, for for Kindle for paperback. And shout out to Veronica Jeans; she's been helping me learning that entire process. So that whole part has been a. I don't know if I'd really call it a channel challenge. It's been, it's been a learning experience. I would say the biggest part for me, biggest challenge I had is actually writing my cancer story as part of this book. That was by far the hardest part in the process for me because I've shared my story so many times on video, but actually sitting down and typing it, mm. it just makes you think more and reflect more on the journey. Um. What's your been your experience, Jim, uh, with books and your as you've written, you know, contributions to books, forwards to books? Well, it's kind of like reflections? It, it's one of those things of you want to make sure what you're saying makes sense. And then, you know, you're like, did I did I and like if anything, I will tell you, as I've learned with the series of Ross's books, it because actually it's, it's funny, right? Ross may listen to this later, but. The first book, what he did was he took what everyone had said on a on a like a live stream because we did a yes. like live stream predictions and he turned that into our contributions. And it was kind of like, ooh, I would have maybe said that a little differently if I knew it was going to be <laughs> right. on, a, on a book. Um, and so it's like taking I mean, not to say you don't take this stuff seriously, but really one you have to make sure that you don't get caught into the, oh, it's got to be perfect. Yes. You know, because you sure. keep redoing it, redoing it, redoing it. Uh, you want it to sound like you, right? I think that's one of the things a uh, friend Mike Alton always talks about is write like you speak, uh, you know, because, yeah. you know, because I would say, and we had, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I'm really enjoying playing around with chat GPT. Yes. But don't, just take it what spits out and make that like it, you, it's got to it's got to have your your voice in it right yes oh and and look at uh, un, uh well first uh great to see you brian kennedy and then hey, Catherine brian. is 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 oh, going God. crazy in the chat and she, well she wants to know if those are gone with the wind plates they're actually little house on the prairie plates uh -huh. Catherine. my wife joy loves little house on the prairie um i like right. it too but she really loves it she so really loves uh it. Yeah. yeah, those are little house um, on the prairie place. But but Catherine also says you can't edit what you don't write. Ooh, good one. Good yes. One. And write to one person. Mm. Ah. Now, Catherine, is there a specific person we should be writing to? How do we figure out who that per like should I be should writing write to, to you? Him, I mean... Right? Do we write to Catherine? Yeah. Um, I would be inquiring minds want to know since since she brought that up. 
So, so we want to know who should we be writing? Who is that one? Should I be writing to Brian Kennedy? What if Brian doesn't listen to me, and which he doesn't usually? But, uh, <laughs> but I, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's a really good point. I uh, see. I write to the person that I think of when I write, think about the topic. Ah, okay, okay, that that makes sense. That makes sense. That does make sense. So yeah. you're probably so Tim. If we think of that with your book, yeah. Who who were you writing to? So for my book, it's it's a few different audiences in the cancer space, which that is a challenge writing to. So cancer patients, cancer survivors, and cancer supporters, which you know they are different audiences that might mm -hmm. have different interests, different definitely different perspectives, which is why we do the show in the first place to share those perspectives and learn from those perspectives. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Brian, yeah. Brian Kennedy says, of course he does. Now I will say, and, and I'm very proud of Brian. Brian has started to do video. You may have yeah. seen some of his videos on LinkedIn. So he has, uh, been making that progression we'll we'll see when he starts to do he's been now he's been a guest on our show before so not to say he's never gone yes. live but i'm i'm waiting to see if there is a live stream in brian kennedy's future Ooh, so inquiring minds want to know brian yes. will that be a live stream i don't know what you would call it yet but uh there, there's there's that possibility um yeah so i think i think those are i mean these are all great uh you know, well, Catherine is just awesome and amazing as it is. And so, uh, oh, look, we got more. Here's another Here's another nugget. Yeah. If you think of your market as a smooth pond, the one is a pebble you drop into the pond, but that focus mm -hmm. will ripple out to the rest of the pond. Having one just helps with the voice. All right. Ooh. And Brian is getting ready to jump into live streams. And here's and here's the beauty of this too, Brian. If you have not considered or thought about it. now, first of all, shout out to our friends here at Streamyard. Yeah, Streamyard has advanced to where uh, what you all aren't seeing on the front end that we see in the back ends is that you can um, not only uh, you know not only are we recording this, we're recording this as individual video files. So Tim's video is separate, my video is separate. So for repurposing, Tim could do something with just his talking and it doesn't necessarily have all these graphics that we have here. So we can use different graphics. And the other piece would be that you can uh, turn this into a podcast because it's also giving you the audio files. And so a lot of these... Uh, you know, just recently attended PodFest and a lot of the talk was around and, and of course, right. At, I don't know. Is it an oxymoron? Catherine can correct me if I'm using the wrong word. Video podcast, right? We, our show on YouTube, I don't know, maybe at this point is considered a video podcast, even though we've always thought of it as a live stream. But when you have that video to go along with your audio, it's great for repurposing because we don't always just want to listen. And so uh, I think that is where this is the, the power of using a program like this is one, it's easy, right? So easy that a retired Marine can do it, right? That, that's, there's, there's my joke for the day. Um, <laughs> and so it, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it is easy to use. It, it's easy for you to take the stuff and repurpose um, and it's, and it's solid, right? It, it's, it works, you know, it's browser based. It doesn't matter if you have a Mac or a PC or I don't know what else there would be. And, and they are going to do it on a, a I think they're even coming up with an app where you're able to do stuff on your phone. Now, right. I still don't know why people like to use the phone so much because, you know, when I'm not, you're looking at these big computer screens. I do have to wear glasses. So the phone would probably make me wear glasses more. Um, <laughs> yes. Cause, cause I don't need contacts. It's for me, glasses is just for reading. So I don't think uh, there's a reason to get contacts, but I think that's part of it is right. So the great, great way to repurpose it. So, you know, uh, and, and here's the other thing I would imagine, Tim, what's going to come out of you writing this book 
it's it's come out of definitely come out of us uh for me like with some of the the podcast interviews i've been on is people start asking you to speak people want to interview you yeah. and so you know you don't necessarily here's the other thing right so as a book author right it's almost like you get a chance to go on a book tour people right. want to talk to you about your book you've given them something to talk about so i'm excited to see what this does for you heck over the next six months leading up to your, uh, your big in-person event, you know? And uh, yeah, I'm excited too. I'm hoping the book also helps build momentum for the event also. Yes. Kind of another... yes, Brian, Brian, we do know, uh, I do know someone you could work with, uh, if, if you're thinking about starting a show. Um, oh, and then th I think this is our, is your friend, I would write right. to a person that I wish I was. Ooh. 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 And uh, who do you think you, who do you wish you were, Mary? We want to know. Yes. And uh, yes, Catherine agrees. StreamYard is so easy to use. So easy. And, uh, and she yeah. liked, yeah, Catherine liked that one too. That was a great one. So, yeah. So I think those are, those are definitely, um, yeah, that's a good one. We'll see if she, if she comments on on that, I will say it's kind of it's kind of funny because uh, I like I'm, I watch the LinkedIn feed and LinkedIn is slower than oh. what we're seeing in Streamyard. So it's like yes, I don't understand. So we we're already in the future over here in on some of the other channels, and we're in the past and uh, in in uh, in 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 LinkedIn land. So, but that's okay. Eventually, okay. you'll you'll hear what I just said. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely. But to talk talk a little bit about more repurposing, Jim, I think there's it's really a great way for authors to to get the word out more about their book, especially like, if you have a live stream show and it's connected to your book in some way. Like one thing that I'm doing with the book is I'm going to include QR codes in the book mm. to the authors because the contributing authors have all been on the show. So right. connecting the live stream show and the authors. I like and then that. when you have QR contributors, codes. that also helps with the marketing as well, because they want to get the word out as well. Um, but what were you going to say, Jim? No, I was going to say that uh, we've got that. We've got the answer. A braver version of Ooh. myself. That's deep. I like that. That's deep. It is deep. We're getting deep here, Jim. Yes. Yes. And then Catherine says that she plans her podcast so that she can repurpose the content into a book, a Twitter chat, and a workbook from the Twitter chat questions. Ah, uh, well, she. That's yeah. really well, well, Catherine, you're smart. You know, that's that's just how you roll. We we understand that. So that's really interesting. I like that idea. What what I did for my book is I actually asked some of the guests who had been on the show to actually write their story so i didn't just like take a transcript from a show and like truncate it down you know to mm -hmm. however many words or whatever and the cool thing about doing it that way is that i discovered new cancer connections or additional um it's basically the same thing uh and perspectives as well that that we didn't learn during the show mm -hmm. which is pretty neat that is definitely neat. So that, yeah. So th this has been, these are some, uh, these are some great, uh, great, great comments, right. Of how we can grow our brand and community with a book. Who would, who would have, yeah. who would have thunk it? Is that a word? Who would have thunk, thunk, thunk it that writing a book could, could uh, grow community, um, you know, and, and just connections, right? Like it was great. You, well, you were there, Tim, in Orlando, right? Yeah. People, you got to meet, people that you were part of this book with got to know them better um you know and uh they're like oh you you're in this book wow you know and uh you know i know i know your friend uh, or our friend i should say brian shulman has done several books as well and uh, yeah uh, he's part of a series i think it's 13 books over i don't know if it's over two years or something but i think he's wow. already contributed to nine books wow. so shout out to brian shulman that's yeah amazing. and and mitch jackson when he wrote his uh i will say it's his it was his first book i think was called the ultimate guide to social media mm. he collaborated with 
people that were like some of the best at a specific niche. Like he had Madeline Scalar wrote a chapter on Twitter. And I think he had, uh, I think Stephanie Liu was talking about live streaming, you know, so just, just these different, or I guess Stephanie Garcia, she's now changed her name. Right. Um, and so these are things, you know, and then even like uh, our good friend, Kelly Noble Mirabella, you know, and uh, Kendra Losi, and then also Eric Buto wrote a, collaborated on a book on uh, the dummies guide to social media etiquette. Right. right. And so, you know, maybe you can talk about that a little bit too, Tim. Do you feel like by collaborating, was that easier when you're like, you know, I don't have to write the whole book. I only have to write a part of the book. Was that, did that like, you know, I guess it's like when they say, you know, you eat, you know, eat the apple one bite at a time. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. And I had been thinking about writing a book for a while. And then I held the in-person event for showing up last November and my guest for that show, he actually wrote a book. He's a cancer survivor himself. And he wrote a book, including stories of other cancer survivors specifically. And so when he showed up with that book where he shared his story and then he included others as well, that really got me moving. And, and I was like, I definitely want, I want to use that kind of format. Mm -hmm. So definitely, you know, looking at other books for inspiration is definitely helpful if you're, if you're feeling stuck or even right. if you're not. Very good. Very good. Well, this has been, this has been fun, Tim. You know, we, we don't, we don't always have guests, but we, we do love having guests. I know we've got some coming up here in the near future, but uh, yeah, this was a great, yes. a great topic, you know, cause uh, I think it's good for people to know uh, that, uh, that we're more than just Tim's pretty face. We, we do do other things as well. And, and Jim's so, pretty face. I know. Uh, can't, so, can't leave out Jim. Let us know if you think Jim's face is pretty. We want to know. <laughs> well, and, and also let us know in the chat, what are some of the topics you'd like to see us cover? Because, yes. uh, you know, we do like to talk about marketing. We, we also talk about, you know, video stuff. We also like, you know, what are those topics as a business owner that you'd like us to have, you know, maybe you want us to have, you know, somebody come on and talk about how to build your email list or, you know, how to uh, do some of these, you know, other things. I mean, we, we had a lot of fun talking about chat GPT and AI. It's a great conversation. And, yeah. uh, you know, that, that may be something we'll have to talk about again. Cause I know I've been, I've been playing around with it some, I don't know, Tim, if you've had a chance to, and, uh, definitely interesting like i actually uh was was working with someone last week and it was um <laughs> i got i gotta laugh at Catherine's comment she said pretty, pretty for a marine i guess <laughs> thank you Catherine. love you too and uh it was uh like write me a listing for a house right you like kind of describe it and it it boom it writes it or we the other thing we did was like uh give us five uh things that a seller needs to think about in this specific location if they're selling their house and it listed them out you know and it was just like wow this is all great blog content for or even just content for a realtor and then it was like write me a script for this a video script for this specific topic and wow. it wrote the script so now you could take that script and like I talked about earlier, put that into big view and now you've got your, your script and your teleprompter and boom, now you've got yourself a professional video. And, and of course goes back to edit it to make it sound like you. But I think it, it's like, to me, it's kind of like lately, right? Lately is AI, but it's like, it gets you to third base, but you need to use your, your human voice to bring yes. it home. So, yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. It's that combination of human and and automation. Which just makes yes. makes things a little bit easier. It saves us some time in the process. Sometimes triggers an idea. Um, things right. like that. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so this has been fun. Tim, uh, great to see you as always. And Thanks we you, will Jim. be back next week 
same bat time, at least for now. We're, we're gonna we're, we may decide. I've been thinking, Tim. We might decide to change the time. Ah. I'm thinking about that. If you we'll, we'll talk Look about. Look at that. that. You guys got an inside peek. I haven't even heard this yet. Right. This is right. News. I'm just breaking I'm news. Just breaking news. That's right. Yes. Breaking news. Yes. And uh, and yeah and and let us know if if we did a LinkedIn audio room for the Tim and Jim show, would you join? Would you come? Because you don't even have to get dressed. That's right? true. It's an audio. No room. No clothes required. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome for the visual. Oh yes, thank you, Tim. We 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 love you. All right, folks. Love well, thank you again. Make sure you follow us on all our channels and and go go follow Tim's new company page we put the link in there so he can start doing a uh, newsletter for perspectives on cancer and uh, it's great to see everyone take care bye everyone